Yo, future, so in Sydney. This is my new stomping ground. This is where I'm gonna be filming, Sydney Park. I don't know where yet, because there's always tons of people around here and that's really scary. <laughs> It's pretty funny for someone who's very much into like the counterculture ideas, alternative ideas, a little bit rebellious that I'm really looking forward to getting back into a routine because the whole shock of moving was pretty intense. Because I'm 29 years old and I've never lived in the city before so I spent 18 years in a country town that had a population of 5,000 people then 11 years in a kind of half city, half country town with 200,000 people. And while there's shit like this going over like every couple of seconds and there's constant noise, I'm really looking like it's so soothing being in this park and not being surrounded by people around like everywhere. And so most people move up to Sydney mostly to get a job because there's more jobs up here or if they're running a startup it's to be involved in the startup community but I'm moving up for neither of those reasons. A lot of my friends moved up from Sydney a few years ago um, and a lot of the meetups and stuff that I run are in Sydney plus uh, I've got an awesome girlfriend in North Sydney so that kind of like helped pull me up as well. But the plan is to actually actively avoid the startup community up here because they're an echo chamber and they're constantly chasing the wrong thing. They're doing something completely misaligned to what I want to be working on. So I'm living in a tiny little shithole of a room in Marrickville for 200 bucks a week, all bills and includers, that's pretty good. And then I'm working in a uh, co-working space that's awesome vibe in St. Peter's, and this is just across the road. And so the routine is going to be basically probably ride from Marrickville to here, and then film with a proper camera, proper like, you know, and I might actually have a mic, and then go edit, and then work. And the point is, like, once I get a few other projects out of the way, I'm going to be working on this full-time peer-to-peer uh, -peer economy that I want to be building. So I'm calling it Perium. Um, so yeah, have a look out for that. Anyway, that's just a bit of background why I'm up here. Um, I wanted to just talk about briefly like the, the trauma of those things of like moving. Like it was really traumatic moving. I'm still kind of just getting over it now. My ideas are gonna suck for another week. Like rationally moving shouldn't be a traumatic experience, but it was for me. It was such a, it was such a shock. Um, it took like three weeks to organize finding someone to move into my place and then finding a place to move into. So that was a bit of a hassle. And so I think there must be some type of like deep tribal kind of evolutionary safety mechanism in play where you're like, you know, the moment you like pushed outside your comfort zone, it just becomes a massive limbic shock. It's probably very similar to the feelings of like being dumped or like being in a threatening situation or having health issues or having no money or losing your job or all these typical like human monkey traumas. I think that's perhaps something we all forget uh, when we go through our lives is that it's, we're all animals really. We're animals trying to fit into a very rational system so it doesn't really make sense a lot. And so I think as a result we tend to like all choose the path of least resistance, like the easiest option, the, uh, the thing that is the easiest and quickest to remove that, that pain or that anxiety. And I noticed that even in looking for a place, so literally the first place I inspected, I was like, yep, I'll take that. Because I messaged 100 people, only 9 responded, and only 3 offered inspection options, so I was like, I'll just take it. And I think people do the same thing when looking for a job as well. They're like, shit, I'm running out of money, that's a massive anxiety, they need a job, and so they literally take the first option, and that's why they end up in these really bad situations. So one thought I had was that it would be awesome if an AI system basically like knew uh, how you responded to these types of things and kind of like guided you through these traumatic events. And I think as humans we kind of need something, some external intelligent entity because there's so many layers, there's like the evolutionary layer, the limbic layer, the nervous system, like so many layers that get affected. And because it's a layered kind of emergent system, that means it's really difficult for us to control it from a rational top-down point of view. It's just things, you know, the inputs affect us and then it creates an emergent outcome. I and mean, when you go to a traumatic event, you basically, you turn to, you know, the people you trust and know, you, your friends, your family to kind of help you through it, but they don't really understand exactly what's happening to cause us. So imagine if we had an artificial intelligent kind of assistant, like a, a kind of guide, I guess, a guide through life, who could actually identify exactly what's causing the stress and anxiety and how to fix it. It could identify what is, what is wrong and basically show you paths of least resistance. Basically, if you take this path and humans will go along the path of least resistance, then your anxiety will be overcome. So right now I feel like a bit of a weirdo kind of hanging out in the bushes when there's like a park all around and like kids playgrounds and stuff. Um, it's kind of like a weird place to be, but it's really soothing. And this should be what the AI should tell me to do. And particularly if the AI can not only identify the deep kind of evolutionary stresses that are causing all this anxiety and worry, but it could then like gamify it and tell you what to do to fix that stress. I mean, I didn't know it would be soothing to step into a bush-like environment um, until I did so, but what if the AI gamified that and actually told me to go and do that in a fun way? I guess you could almost describe this idea as like a 24-7, um, on-demand, always watching, always guiding you as uh, artificial intelligence psychiatrist that gamifies your life to make you feel good always. And I think if we each had something like that, it would help us kind of step out of our comfort zones, out of our little bubbles even more. Um, it would be less of a traumatic experience, and so we'd be more likely to go and explore new things. So what do you think? Think back to a traumatic experience that you recently had and how an artificial intelligence could have like gamified that and guided you through that process and made it much more easier for you. Snap your thoughts, our future.